Do you feel like you've lost your motivation and you're drifting endlessly in life? Then this message is for you to help you get re-inspired, reconnected with your dreams and back in flow to think better and live better. Here is Hilda and Team Sabiti vividly breaking down ways how to unapologetically be successful in life. The Coach. Give yourself permission to live a life you deserve. Today we're talking about um, heartbreaks, but in a different angle. Uh, in an angle of uh, you have been heartbroken and uh, the best that you have done subconsciously or cautiously, you have let yourself put your guard so high, you have built a fence around yourself, you have isolated yourself, you have gone into solitude, you have forgotten about the world and you even don't know how to operate again. You know, like someone comes from prison and is put into an open world and they don't know where to start uh, they don't have a job they don't have where to sleep they don't have anywhere and you're just hanging on by a thread we know that heartbreaks are worst of the things that can happen I know as we speak right now there are people who are going through a heartbreak and there are people that have avoided heartbreaks Yep. willingly avoided heartbreaks like you have you ever you told someone we need to talk and someone just knows that you know what that we need to talk sounds like danger so I'm never going to show up and I will never listen to anything and some ends. and sometimes the bit of shielding is mm. comes from this angle mm. I'm always the one that loves more of course I'm always the one who is hurt yes I'm, I'm always the, I'm always left the behind one who is left behind mm. so in a way to try and shield yourself mm. you avoid yeah and if you're yet in the category you're trying to avoid a heartbreak my friend you are only prolonging your pain you're only prolonging because you're dancing at the edge yes you will fall over but instead of falling over instead of someone pushing you off the cliff it's better you decide that you know what I'm better off away from this stage. and even I think from uh, some of our lessons about heartbreaks mm. one of the things that we kept mentioning is expectations expectations expectations, expectations yes sometimes you build up a lot of expectations mm. and once your expectations are not met mm then you are headed for a heartbreak. a heartbreak. But you know, I think I love the way Bahati tried to put it in the book, in Deliberately Selfish, trying to emphasize, mm. love yourself, believe mm. in yourself, give yourself the opportunity first before mm -hmm. you give it to another person mm. so that you will not depend on them. Mm -hmm. You will not wait for approval and their consent to become somebody in life. Mm. You will, obviously, all the time appreciate yeah, who you are who yeah. you are you know when you behold yourself in and a if someone does not appreciate you you will walk away yes you behold yourself in a mirror and you're like i think i have the killer figure mm -hmm. i'm the most beautiful thing that has ever existed yes. i have those beautiful eyes mm. look at me the skin is mm. sparkling sparkling sorry mm. and you know you give yourself all the credit that mm. there is mm. in other words you begin by appreciating yourself after appreciating yourself anyone who comes into your life will appreciate you yes you will radiate confidence and and exude uh, i mean all the abilities and and and, and the self uh, self esteem and uh, do you know that uh, part of what self love is mm. what people forget is part of self love is knowing the truth yes because the truth will set you free, free yep. the truth gives you the next level in your life it makes you open it lets you open the next chapter in your life you cannot keep reading the same chapter of your life because you fear the truth that lies ahead mm. you either face it or face it now the truth it's if you decide to hide it to bury it it will come up sometime. It will. Eventually. If you decided to, if you decide to go around it, you're only prolonging your pain. True. The best way to face the truth is head on. Yeah. You collide with it. Yes. It hurts you. Mm. You face it. Mm. You face your greatest fear of it's being abandoned. It's the bitter truth about truth. Yes. The bitter truth about truth is you face your nightmare. You face your your fears and deal with them once and for all and it will not kill you but now what happens is we prolong the pain mm. by trying to avoid dealing with the truth but you know the truth that you pro, uh, uh, that you pro, i mean the truth that you don't want to deal with mm. right now mm. you will eventually have to deal with it some day tomorrow and it will even be more but later. at the point when you'll be dealing with it you will have magnified become bigger stronger yes okay? and you're becoming weaker Exactly. You mm. have to because mm. you remember that using a lot of energy, energy to avoid to keep the truth. it away. Yeah. 
<laughs> by the way, you're using a lot of energy, like you're running a hundred miles per, I don't know by per what, but you are running so quickly away from the truth. And you know, there is avoiding, <coughs> there are two things involved. There is avoiding and then there is living in denial. Now, there are those that are running away from the truth. As we speak right now, your friends have told you that, you know what, I really don't see this working. You yourself, you have sat down and made an evaluation. But again, you second guess yourself and you keep saying whatever you have it in your, in your head is not right. You have told yourself, you know what, this is not going to work. You have told yourself, for example, um, someone stays in Uganda and the other stays in Abu Dhabi and then uh, you're dating, online dating, you've never met each other. And all of a sudden, the man is telling you that, you know what, uh, come in your one of your holidays or leave, come and check on me. And then the girl is, is excited. When the time to, to go check on him comes, uh, the guy is like, uh, now you send the money so that I can book your tickets and I can book your hotel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, if you don't love yourself enough, Enough, you feel like oh he needs me let me go so you go on what deal <laughs> you board a plane you pay your own air ticket <laughs> you look for a visa you pay your own hotel and guess what you're not going to smile at him. when we talk about the truth again mm. i you know when you see all the red flags mm. about your partner mm. and not only that mm. when you put your head down to sleep you dream exactly mm -hmm. the same red flags yeah whoever tries to talk to you is showing you that scene you even hate them Exactly. Mm. Why? Because you don't want to face the truth, truth head yeah. on. Mm. You're like, now, okay. Feels like this was my last mm -hmm. chance. I'm holding feels on like, for dear life. Feels like there is no, no other option apart from this particular guy. But mm. let me tell you this. Mm. Until when those red flags become or begin to manifest now in a very, very deep way. Mm. Until when probably that one thing that you're trying to run away from mm. becomes so evident and undeniable. Mm. Then what will happen is you will have exposed your heart even for a very deep deep, mm, a deeper break, heartbreak. Yeah. Mm. Now, the best thing to do in life, mm. really, is when you see some of those red flags, mm. okay, I'm not saying give them a lot of attention, but don't just simply ignore, mm. okay? Mm. Why? Because whatsoever you're trying to ignore right now, if it you're not doing anything you. right now mm. about it, it will come it back. It will come back haunting. For example, mm. if you, the kind of guy that you're dating, probably two, three people have come to you and have told you, the guy is not straight. Yeah. Okay, mm. is in multiple relationships. relationships, and you don't want to even think about the fact that the guy is doing mm. that. You're like, you know, because provided when he comes, I'm with him, is mine. Yeah, you understand. Now, wait until you cannot bear mm. with this one fact mm. that his multiple relationships now have come or drawn closer to you. To you, mm -hmm. okay, you cannot deny them. Anywhere you go to, there's someone who's giving you that eye, mm. all things you're actually in, 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 intruding. Mm. But you thought you're the only one, and you wanted to keep that to yourself, that you know, I'm the only one in his life. Mm. But the truth is, there are multiple. Mm. There are so many that are in his life. Mm. And it seems not to be shaken about the fact that he has this multiple re relationship. So, yeah. for how long will you want to stay like a side thing? Yeah, so sometimes we give excuses for no good reason. So, the thing here is, what mm. we're emphasizing, mm. okay, building expectations Mm. and wrong expectations to put it right mm. okay mm. will kill you yeah you'd rather build expectations on what will build you or make you better yes i would rather that you dwell on the fact that i have known the truth about this man mm. this is who he is but i'm ready to face it mm. that's different from i don't want to know the truth about him mm. let me live in denial mm. until when the bomb uh, uh busts mm. you understand mm. so either way mm. you have the opportunity to guard your heart against mm. a heartbreak like against such by dealing with some of these truths. Yeah, yeah and and facing them now i want us to talk just a little bit about how this whole thing builds up in us because some of it is not really natural some of it it's because some events in our lives traumatic events or things in the past happened so they cause us they build that uh, th that kind of expectation in us for example you're a lady and you lost your father when you were young or maybe you were brought up by a single mother and you blamed uh, you blamed it subconsciously you blamed your father for living 
or you felt like by the death of your father you were rejected and abandoned as a child so what you do is in every man that you come across you look for a father figure that's why you end up being in love with married men that's why you end up being in love with older older men with a very huge difference why because you easily trust a man and put your life into their hands for them to be able to father you but you know that you're not going to fall into the hands of the right people all the time so you fall into the hands of the wrong people who take you for granted wrong people who use you why because you let them use you because you have that longing of having a father figure in your life and i think it's two way it also mm. happens to some of the boys yes yes like uh you I, i've come across boys who are like that mm. they fall in love with very much for women yes and they get a, f- a sense of uh, contentment mm. and satisfaction when they are around these older women who mother them who actually behave like their mothers so mm. they end up okay uh either in multiple relationships because you know that thing mm. where your conscience is telling you that i think it's wrong mm. okay mm. i'm talking about age difference of about 15 years mm. or even okay. more or 20. even more so in other words the woman you are with mm. is fit to be your mother mm. so to speak but you know she's the one that you Yeah, feel yeah, comfortable yeah. with why because she will uh, be like more like your mother mm. the mother that you missed or uh, the mother that was not there for you mm. he she she knows how to handle you she knows to prepare for you that nice breakfast you know to she uh, you. yeah she, she, she will do your undies for you and you know she will iron them she will make sure that your shirts are clean and etc and etc I think you are looking for your mother. You have yes. not yet sat down to look for the person, a partner, a, mm. a partner, a someone companion. that you, you mm. th- th- that can um, uh, help you mm. become the real man that you are meant to be. Mm. So, it's two way. But now such people are prone to heartbreaks. Because you're ever getting into a relationship with, without a clear reason and without a solid reason. So you get in there, things do not work out the way you expect, you run away. or the other person walks away not only that mm. even when they get in i think there was a situation i dealt with for mm. some time mm. where this young boy found her himself uh, f- falling in love always usually fo- found himself falling in love with mature women mm. but you know what used to happen the other women know what they want mm. this is a mature woman she mm. knows exactly what she wants so she can easily say sorry Mm-hmm. and she can easily Just avail yes avail her car for mm-hmm. you to drive mm-hmm. she will um, uh, buy you the fancy shirts the fancy trousers mm-hmm. she will give you some pocket change mm-hmm. she knows exactly what you need as a young man mm-hmm. but naturally as i mentioned earlier subconsciously you, you you find yourself still falling in love with the younger girls mm-hmm. those that are in your age bracket mm-hmm. so this boy found himself okay always in multiple relationships mm. he has the other woman who will supply that for uh, that for, has a young girl yes but also has these young girls mm. and you realize what that what that leads to yeah. okay in case the other woman also has men mm. so you realize that flow the, the network mm. that network becomes very, very hard and very complicated mm. so in other words you're endangering most of these young girls were into your life mm. why because you can't stay where you are because even when you know and know that I get a sense of contentment when I'm around this old woman. Mm. She knows exactly what to do mm. from bed. Mm. She knows what to do in bed. Mm. She knows what to do in the kitchen. Mm. You know what happens with the stomach and a man, okay? So, she knows exactly what to do and she plays her cards well. Mm. Okay? Mm. But because subconsciously, you know it that what you're doing is wrong. You find yourself even with mm. these young girls mm. so you hurt these girls break their hearts and eventually when the other woman finds out mm. that you ha- you are in multiple relationships she will obviously draw away the funding mm. she will take away her car okay she will stop giving you that pocket change and eventually you'll be out of her life and pre- maybe you'll be heading to another mm. relationship with another mature woman mm. why because you need the constant funding to have a life mm. 
Okay, so that's where we come in with um, how do you put your guard down? Because many people have been heartbroken and we usually say that no one is immune. No one is immune. We are all prone and we are all because we deal with human beings. So a little bit of where that comes from, of course we've not really diagnosed it fully, but a little bit of where that comes from and then a, a little bit of what we talked about uh, previously, how to just, I mean, what how never to avoid the truth and never to deny the truth always facing it uh, head on now for most people after you go through previous heartbreaks some of them it's a heartbreak and some of you it's heartbreaks what you do is you shun away you close your doors you walk away you put your guards so high that you do not want anyone to ever cross and come into your life you feel like uh you isolate yourself so we want to ask today how do you let your guard down how do you help yourself to make sure that you move on in your life and accept to live a life that is full and welcoming very true yeah. most people mm somehow convince themselves that that without this particular relationship mm. there is no life yeah they somehow convince themselves that it's a, it either works or it works mm. so in other words even when the other party remember that there are those that will always move away mm. in any relationship someone will move away mm. and another will keep holding on now we're talking about this person who's trying to keep holding on who was trying to hold on to this relationship which is slipping through their uh, their hands who was trying to hold on to this thing that seems not to be working yeah. who's trying to hold on hold on hold on you know mm -hmm. now you're the kind of person who convinces yourself you somehow put yourself in that position of as in it has to work mm -hmm. even when the other person has already made up their mind and decided to move on mm -hmm. and decided to have their own life yeah. so you stay long in this place of pain mm. and that pain is what leads to what Bahat was talking about mm. soon or later you, you you get scared of ever committing to anyone else mm. in other words when anyone talks about commitment you run away mm. you tend to hate a particular type of men mm. you somehow just dislike them mm. I've met some girls Hilda who say I can never date a handsome man Handsome men are pain. Mm. And that's how they put it. Mm. Handsome men are pain. But it's not entirely true. It's because of what you've gone through mm. that causes you or has pushed you to make such statements. Even ugly men can be pain. Yeah. So there's nothing but like... who is the judge of ugly and handsome? <laughs> you! <laughs> of course. You know? Mm. Anyway, let's move. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I want us to know that it's very natural. It's very natural to want to protect ourselves. When something happens to you, your, your number one instinct is to protect yourself. I want you to imagine a house where you have a very prized pro, uh, uh, item. It could, whatever you think it is, either your TV, your what. You know, there is a way we build walls and we build doors and we buy padlocks to make sure that we keep ourselves very protected. But again, these things, when we build the walls around our hearts, then we tend to keep away the, the bad guys and even as well the, the good guys. So how do you do it? Number one, we've talked about, usually talked about getting out of your comfort zone. There is a comfort that you create around yourself when you put your guards up, when you put your walls up. There is a comfort that you automatically create. Like, I do not want to be hurt again, so I'm better off coming from work, going to work. I don't go to any other place. I don't want to open my life to anyone. When someone comes to converse with you, there is no smile. You, when they say hi, you say hi and walk away. You're not inviting. You are not entertaining at all and you just don't want to know. Sometimes, mm. girls have mentioned this, that when I see he, uh, his smiles mm. remind me of my previous or oh, my ex. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. The way he talks reminds me of my ex. Now that means mm. you've never moved on. Yeah, that means you still done. have your ex You're somewhere. Them. Yes, s somewhere in your life. They're even taking up a bigger space in your in your brain. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And you know that's why you have room to think about everyone in relation to your ex. Mm. In other words, you've never gotten rid of your ex. Mm. But I think. Okay, before anything happens, Bahati has talked about the comfort zone. Mm. Okay, clear your head. 
clear your rooms. You know when you're shifting? Mm. You know when you're leaving that old, that old, that house that you used to be in mm. and you have to move on? Mm. What, you ha- what happens is you clean the rooms. You don't want to leave anything behind. Mm. Clear the rooms of your heart. If you know that <clears throat> it's never going to work, mm. don't prolong your pain. Yeah. Clear that. Mm. Now, after clearing that, brings me to the bit. Wh- wh- what happens w- when you talk about the comfort zones? Mm. In our hearts, we prepare ourselves, mm. okay, after a heartbreak. This is what we do. Mm. In most times, or in most cases, after a heartbreak, okay, you start to shield yourself against anything that will cause mm. that pain. Any or, possible, yeah. Exactly. So you lock up every door, tightly lock every mm. door, mm. in order not to go back to the same pain that you were in. Mm. But do you know what that leads to? It leads to one thing. The day you open up these doors, mm. okay, you're most likely going to fall into the same trap yeah. that you were avoiding. Mm. Well, because you did not deal with your heart thoroughly mm. at the point of breakup. Mm. Now, when you got that breakup, when you got that heartbreak, you simply, okay, decided to just lock up all the rooms mm. without minding. Mm what is still in that room, mm-hmm. what needs to be cleared out of that room. What is rotten in that room. Exactly. Mm. So you kept all the garbage, you kept everything you within those rooms. You have all the rooms. inventory, yeah. So the day you sneak to open up one of these rooms mm. for someone to enter, mm. it you fall into the one. same trap. Mm. Why? Because you did not deal with those issues. We are device. Mm. Okay? Mm. Don't be so quick mm. to get into that comfort zone mm. of a zen I'm shielding myself. Let me cover this. myself. Let me shield. Yeah. Let me shield. Let me. Don't rush to shield. Mm. Rush to clear the rooms. Yeah. Once you've cleared the rooms, mm. be open. Mm. If someone has called you and wants to go on a date with you, mm. why not? Mm. Okay. We wouldn't advise you that immediately after breakup you get do, into a relationship. Get into a relationship. We wouldn't advise you to do no. that. Mm. But mm. okay. You, 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 Going out with someone to have a cup to of a coffee, coffee? No, no, that problem. Has no problem. Be yourself. Mm. Actually, we, uh, when we were teaching, remember some time back when we were talking about uh, the exit, mm. we said that you need to hang out with friends. Yes. Hang out with those people that will not Where remind you. Where you are totally you. neutral. Mm. Yes, that they will not remind you of the your past. past mm. Who will help you move forward. Mm. So, locking yourself up in the room and crying through the night mm. and the next day and the next day does not work. Mm better when you go out and be with friends mm. and hang out with friends and have your life mm-hmm. you eventually get healed faster. faster yeah yeah okay so number one you get out of your comfort zone and uh, before we even go to uh, to uh, number two I want us to just uh, uh, take a moment and have a sense of clarity about our lives sense of clarity about your next decision some of us are heartbroken but we have never thoroughly sat down just like Tim said to take inventory of the happenings, the previous happenings. Do we still love that person? Do we say we can never, is it a total no in bold and in capital letters? What is it? Do you still love that person? Do you still adore them? Do you feel if they came back, we would, you would give them another chance? Because some of those things hinder us from actually moving on and creating a different life and living a happy life. Why? Because you don't have a sense of clarity. If someone asks you, do you still love him? No, I don't. I even don't ever want to see him anywhere close to me. But in your heart, your heart if your heart has had emojis, eh, it would put that emojis that has wide opens and laughing wide eyes open and laughing because the heart will be like "Mm, you're lying you still love him you're just living in denial so get very clear about what it is that you exactly want out of this do you think you want to go back do you think you're waiting for him to come and chase after you because (laughs) do you think what do you want do you you totally want to cut off do you remember that story do you Mm. remember that story where the lady say that Mm. i live in the neighborhood Mm -hmm. with my ex Mm. You remember yes, that story? Yes, yes, but I whenever live, I see I, him... I can't move on. Mm-hmm. I'm scared. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. You realize mm-hmm. that this girl was doing herself a disservice 
His heart, she's heartbroken. The man is living with another girl. Yes. But they live in the same locality. Exactly. The guy knows her place. Yes. So she can't move on. So, so the guy mm. has a luxury mm. of even knocking at her door even at midnight. And maybe... Once the guy senses that probably there's someone in that room, mm. will even call, who is that one? Uh-huh. But remember the guy who was calling... Broke is, your heart. Broke your heart and is with someone. Person. You get what I'm trying to yeah. say. Sometimes so, we give the people to, the leeway to when, step on When you decide mm. to clear that room... You clear it. it. Yeah. Okay? Mm. Don't even try to build this expectation that you never know. Maybe at a certain point X, mm. they will have issues with a current girlfriend mm-hmm. and they will end it and mm-hmm. come back to me. Yes. Avoid. So that means you're putting your guards high for everyone else out there. A guy tells you, hey, where did you stay? How are you? Oh, can I give you a push? And you're all, no, 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 don't give me a push. I will be fine. So this guy is like, hey, since this girl does not want me to see her place, that means that there's something that she's hiding. She's hiding now, if he was a potential suitor, he will, he will walk, walk away. away. Yeah. He will he not will give walk. you a chance. Yeah, he will not read those signs mm. and still keep around. Mm, because after, he will know you hide. After something. reading those signs, he will mm. be fast, very fast to just move on. He will just know that I think I'm I'm in the wrong hand. To stay connected with a coach, call 0757 117 117 or 0784 331 331. On social media, it's Bahati Hilda or Team Sabiti. You can even email us at bahatihilda at gmail.com.